Hello and welcome to Where Parents Talk TV. My name is Leanne Castellino. Today we are talking about transgender parenting and we're delighted to welcome Jesse and Rose. Thank you to both of you for being here today. Hi. Yeah, thank you. Jesse, I wanted to start with you uh, and ask you, what did you know about the word transgender prior to it becoming um, a part of your family story? Um, I have to say, I know very little. I know transgender is generally male acting or tr feeling as a female or vice versa, but that's about all that I know. Tell us a little bit about um, Rose. So Rose was born a, a boy uh, named Kevin. He was born with as a happy, smart baby, just like any other baby. They're cute and everything. There is nothing actually make me suspect she, she will be a transgender. Tell me about the day that you were told by Rose about being transgender. I, I have to say, uh, I, Rose did not tell me directly. And I remember that day, just like yesterday, I was cooking breakfast and uh, her brother come down and told me Rose is transgender, which I was like, I still remember the food is cooking and I was like, what? What are you talking about? What do you mean by it? And then, of course, I remember that day, Rose has a competition or something, and we couldn't talk really live. So I pretty much, I told Rose that morning, I basically say, hey, we love you. Your brother told us you're transgender. We still love you, but we need to talk more when you come back today from the competition. And did you end up doing that? Yeah, then that I think after she comes back, it might not feel good for her for that whole day. But for uh, after she comes back, we have a talk. I basically, I, 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 I have to say I was a rack. I was doing research the whole day and trying to figure out what should I say. But I think I basically ask her what she feel, why she feel that way what happened. So, but we concluded, we still love her regardless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Rose, take us through that a little bit. Um, when did you uh, start feeling that maybe you were different than the gender that you were born into? Um, I think maybe uh, I started having suspicions that I was trans when I was about 11. Um, and then Afterwards, I spent like four-ish years just doing research, figuring more stuff about myself, about how being trans worked, and overall just learning as much as I could about, uh, yeah, just being trans and what that meant for me. An 11-year-old having to sort of process this, that's, that's a lot. Uh, were there signs that made you think, you know, I need to research this? Could you give us some examples of things that were going through your mind that made you take on that research? Um, I think the biggest sign for me was just that when puberty started, I was very much thinking, yeah, this really isn't where I wanted to be going, right? Like, um, nothing, none of these changes make me feel comfortable, right? Like, um, and this is like really strange for me, right? And then I sort of thought more about on why that might be. And um, after a lot of like self-reflection and just, yeah, self-discovery, I guess, um, that's more or less how I figured out that, hey, maybe I might, I might be trans. So when you started to do the research, what struck you about what you were reading? Was it helpful? Did it sort of empower you to uh, take the next steps required? Um, I think for the most part, what I was reading was more informational, right? Oh, what does this mean? What are the next steps? What would hypothetically, I, what, I, what, what I would be doing, right? Like um, it was very much, I want to learn more about what this means, what this means for me, what this means in general, right? And so I think, it wasn't necessarily empowering, but more just, it was informational, right? Uh, I learned a lot about just being trans in general, as well as 
uh, I learned a lot about me, right? I learned a lot about myself th during that period. So you're 11 years old, you, you take on this research, you know, something's not right. Um, what did you decide to do next? Who was the first person that you decided to tell something so in incredibly important and profound and life-changing? Um, who did you go to? Um, I think I didn't come out until I was about 15. And uh, I told my brother first, because um, uh, I've always been very close to him, right? Um, which, so probably he's one of my most trusted people, right? So he's the person I told first. And I thought, okay, I'm going to tell him. And I think that I have faith that he's going to be supportive and that he's going to be okay with it. And it turned out well, right? He was very supportive. And that, um, yeah, I'm very grateful that he is supportive and to me, yeah. <laughs> so for that four year period, uh, take us through what was, that was like for you, um, emotionally, psychologically. I mean, 11 years old, 15 years old, you're still very young uh, and to have to process something, you know, this big in your life. How did you go about that in your day to day? Um, I think during that time, it was more of something in the back of my hot mind, right? It was something that I more or less knew but I didn't really see a good way to do anything about that for the longest time, right? So I more or less just kept it inside, right? And yeah, I lived my life pretty much as I normally would for the rest of the time, right? It's something that I knew in the back of my mind. It's something that was, it, it certainly did bother me, but I just didn't really see what my next steps would be. I didn't really see how I would go about doing this. So I more or less just went about with my normal life as I would, right? Did you see at some point in that time frame that one day you would want to come out and as trans or did you feel that you were alone and isolated um, during that period? Uh, yeah, I think it was very scary, right? It was definitely a fear of mine that uh, things wouldn't work out if I came out. And um, yeah, so I definitely did have fears that it just wouldn't be a real uh, reality, um, especially within any kind of near future. Um, and yeah, I definitely will say that I didn't plan to come out to my brother so soon. Um, and yeah, I just really, I thought I, I was, uh, I definitely didn't really have a lot of hope for that period. Um, and it was scary, right? It's scary. It's isolating for sure. Jesse, let me ask you, as you listen to that um, coming from, from Rose now, during that period when she was, you know, between 11 and 15 years old, the rest of the family suspected nothing. I think uh, at least between, like, I think maybe a year before she came out, I starting to suspect something is not, is not exactly right because uh, she grew apart with her uh, male friend, the male friends, like junior, like uh, if I'm thinking about middle school, she has a lot of uh, boys as friends, right? And uh, ninth grade, she's starting to grow distance with the boys and she had a lot of girls as friends. And uh, that is the period of the time. And I did really starting to notice that she has a lot of feminine ha habits. That's why I'm starting to ask her, her brother as to, hey, is something wrong? Is there something that you, you know that I don't know? Like, feel free to tell us. Like, as a parent, we love you guys. Because for the longest time, I think probably for six months, I was suspecting uh, Rose is, a, is gay. Like I didn't, like because she acted very femininely. So I was like, okay, is that the, is that the reason? Yeah. On that note, Rose, did you go through that process as well, asking yourself if, if that was the case? Um, I'd say no, actually. For me, I always knew that uh, I liked girls, right? And in fact, that was something that helped me in my process of discovering that I was trans. 
because I always very much identified with uh, lesbians. And um, that's something that very much resonated with me more than the straight male experience. So that's also another one of the things that contributed as a factor in my discovering that I was trans. Jesse, I want to go back to um, that day, the conversation. So the day goes by, the competition's over. You've had time to kind of process the shock of what your sons told you, that your, that your other son at that point uh, has come out as trans. Take us through the conversation that you had. I, I, I think that conversation is not a well-structured conversation because I'm still in shock. And all I wanted to is really hear what Rose has to tell me. And I know at that time, the only thing that I know is I love her. I love her. Besides that, I think I'm still very much in shock. Most parents absolutely, you know, in this situation would would certainly agree with that. But I'm wondering what else was going through your mind as you're just trying to process this is, um, you know, is there any kind of fear that you now have for, for your child? Definitely fear. I had a lot of fear and a lot of guilt, a lot of confusion at the time because I, I did feel she chose a hard road. I know it's not a choice. It is something that it come with it. But at the time I felt like it is a hard road she's going to face in the future. And I don't know what that entails. And I worry about her physical health. If she's going to go through all of the transition, uh, the HRTs, the surgeries, everything else, what kinds of things that she will face. And also more importantly, what kind of social stigma she's going to face and uh, whether she get, she's going to get attacked one day by people that really is having the transgender phobic, right? So I, I, I worry about all the possible things that might happen to her. And I, I also, at that moment, I also worried, okay, so what if this is a part of the teenager? She'll come back one day and realize, oops, everything is different. Right, I, I, I have all kinds of fear, confusion. I'm putting myself back and forth. That's part of the reason I, I just wanted to listen to her. Rose, let me ask you, how difficult was that conversation with your mom? Um, I think it was very difficult, right? I think especially because it was very hard to adequately get my point across, right? Or the way it expressed the way I was feeling. Um, and I think it's really frust- it was really frustrating for me. Um, and especially it was really scary because um, as I mentioned earlier, right, it's there's very much a sense of despair, right? That, oh, this maybe this isn't ever gonna work out, right? I'm never going to be able to fully transition. Things aren't going to work as I would want them to, right? Um, so I think it was very tense for me at least. I was really nervous. Um, and I think overall, I was just really relieved that there wasn't any direct antagonism there, right? So yeah, I think it was a really tough conversation for me. And uh, yeah, it, it's definitely a struggle. What was the tipping point that led you to tell your brother that day? Um, I think it was more, I think there wasn't really any specific uh, event really that happened. Um, it was more of a spur of the moment thing, I think, um, because for the longest time, I uh, before I came out, I was a very avid LGBT supporter. Um, and so uh, I went on a walk with my brother and he was basically asking, um, are you part of the community, right? Like, is there something that you want to tell me, right? And then at that moment, I was like, I trust my brother. Um, and so it was more of a spur of the moment, like, yeah, I'm going to do this now, right? Um, and so I told him, yes, uh, I'm, I think I'm trans, right? 
Having gone through that conversation and so many other things beyond that, um, what advice could you give to somebody else in your shoes, Rose, about how to approach this topic within their family, or at least to tell anybody um, that they trust about their feeling? Um, I think the biggest thing is that you need to make sure that you're safe, right? I think when coming out, the biggest thing to, the most important thing is just making sure that you're safe, that everything, that you can uh, keep, stay safe, right? Um, Because I know for a lot of people, it's going to be very risky, right? It's not always the safest prospect. And, but also think that it's really important to have someone you can talk to, uh, talk about to this, with this, right? Um, It helps to have a confidant, right? Someone who can listen to your struggles, right? And um, that can be anyone, right? As uh, it can be teachers, friends, uh, siblings, parents, right? But I think just the most important thing is to stay safe. And I think just in general, um, that things will get better, right? That, um, that even if things look dire right now, the most important thing is to still have hope, right? Did you expect that day that your, your brother would have shared this with your mom? Um, I think I definitely was not expecting it at the time, right? But I also was feeling, I think I'm going to start telling people once I feel ready to tell everyone, right? Because I don't think it's fair to ask someone else to keep the secret for me, right? So I was more thinking, okay, uh, I feel like I'm ready, right? So I'm going to start by telling my brother and then... I think I'll be okay if things expand from there. So Rose, uh, or sorry, Jesse, you describe the flood of thoughts that go through, that went through your mind when Rose told you this news. You mentioned guilt and any parent who is a parent feels guilt on a, on a regular basis. There's no doubt about that. But with respect to this situation, can you describe what you mean by the guilt that you felt? I, uh, the first thing that it comes to me is, is it something I did? Like when I raised her for the 15 years, did I did anything that causes this, right? So that's, that's as a parent, I basically associated with every, I went back to memory lane and trying to figure out, is this what happened? Is that what happened? Did she because I, I did some research. Some of it is said, okay, she sometimes these things are coming associated with sexual abuse. So my first instinct was, was you abused by anybody? You can tell me what happened, right? So it's it's more trying to say there has to be something that I did in the past 15 years that I, I didn't do right, right? And caused this. What happened? How did you come to peace with that um, in terms of in your own mind? Because obviously it it wasn't any of those things, right? How did you, how did you reconcile that? I think I, that has been the toughest time for me that, that about six months to a year. And I have to, because after I had the conversation with her, I was really trying to say, okay, I have to find some help, find find some professional help to help me understand this because I obviously don't understand and I couldn't really pinpoint anything. So I called around and then I called around my friends, my like some my friends are doctors. I called them and say, do you know of ev- anybody that deal with this? Is this a psychology thing? Is this, what is it? And then one of my friends who's a doctor and recommended me is like reach out to Stanford a gender clinic, which we did. I'm very, very happy I did because it's very hard to get onto the wait list. And I remember the first appointment we got was my older one's, graduation, high school graduation day. And because it's very hard to get that appointment, 
And I talk to my older one and I say, you know, grandma and grandpa and dad will go to your graduation. Mom and Rose have to go to this doctor appointment because this is very important. So uh, we went to the doctor's appointment and uh, I think I was crying mostly the whole time. And Dr. A and uh, the slew of the doctor was the psychologist and they, I, I think I asked them, I said, what happened? Like, what did I do, right? Did I cause any of this? What can I, what can I do to help? And then they g- gave me a lot of, I, I have to say, I have never seen any doctors are so passionate and so com- have such um, compassion and really go through some of the details with me as to, okay, this is the gender spectrum. It's nothing that you did or nothing you could do. This is everybody is going to be different. Somebody is zero, somebody is a hundred and somebody is 50, 50 or 70, 30. It's like, you got to understand there's nothing you did or nothing you could do. And I think that assurance that really, really helped me in trying to say, okay, this is nothing that I did. And my next hurdle to come through is really trying to say, okay, how can I get through my fear? Because it's obviously she wanted, she's part of the um, puberty at the time and she wanted to take HRT. My next question is, does this going to jeopardize her health, right? In any way or shape? What if one day she regrets it? As a parent, it is, um, am I making the right decision for, for my child? Knowing she's still not a adult yet, right? Am my decision actually going to impact her for the rest of her life? Am I doing the right thing to allow her to do HRT? I think that was a lot of the contention for the next couple of months between us as a family. Let me ask you, uh, you mentioned uh, Rose's dad and you know we've already talked about your, your son being very accepting. How did Rose's dad take this news? I, I have to say like Rose's dad and I, we are very much like ever since they're little, we always stand like, every decision on them, we do it together. And Rose's dad, she might, he might be a guy with a few words, but he really, really adores Rose. And uh, anything that I, I did, like we did it together as the family. And I really appreciated that he, I, I, I went to a lot of parenting support group for transgender teenagers and uh, looking at those families where one of the parents decided they couldn't handle the situation. And uh, I really appreciate my husband were with us for the whole journey. That's wonderful. Um, Rose, let me ask you, what was that first appointment at the gender clinic like for you? Um, I think it was definitely a big turning point for me because I went there with hopes that um, maybe they can help me uh, educate my mom, I guess, right? Like, um, I think the most important thing is just like, I want to be able to take the next steps, right? That was the most important thing to me at the time, right? And it was like, I need to do this no matter what, right? And so I think uh, it was hard for me to talk her through it myself because um, we were both very emotionally invested, I'd say, right? And so I think they were a massive help in um, basically just getting us all on the same page, right? Making sure we're all together on this issue, right? We're on the same team. We're all trying, uh, we're all, trying to help me, right? And I think that was the most most important thing that happened during the first meeting. Jesse, let me ask you, um, because I'm gonna assume that one of the next steps is you having to tell 
the rest of your family. What was that like for you? Uh, I, I think uh, my brother is actually also lives in Bay Area. So we, we, we were close. So I, t- I told him first and he's very understanding and he's basically say, oh, I'm sorry. I can't imagine what Rose went through. If this is something that she feels, then was supportive of, of him. And uh, her cousin actually took her shopping for clothes. So I think the extended family that really, really are very understanding and supportive. And I, to be honest, I have not told the grandparent yet because for their age and uh, I, I just, we, we haven't told the grandparents yet. That, that's understandable. Uh, let me ask you, um, Rose, what was the timeline between the day that your mom and dad found out and the date of your first appointment at the gender clinic? They found out in January. Yeah, I think it was around January that I came out to them. And then our first appointment was in June. Yeah, June. 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 Okay. <laughs> so that's relatively quick. Um, tell us then, Rose, where are you at in this whole process? Um, well, I think we were slated to start HRT in, I want to say October? Yeah. Uh, in October. And, um, but then we ran into a roadblock with um, my eating disorder. They said, uh, yeah, you're too underweight. Um, it's not safe for you to start HRT right now. And then they sent me to the hospital for two weeks so I could recover. But then uh, I finally started doing it, starting, started HRT uh, in November. And yeah, things have been going well ever since. That's basically where I am now. That's wonderful. Uh, Jesse, let me ask you, um, you know, there, Rose mentioned an eating disorder, um, which is, as I understand it, common among many um, children who are trans. Um, how has the gender clinic helped her with that? And what are the, the steps that they were able to take um, to keep, keep her going on this journey? I, I think a lo- I think the other thing that I really, really appreciate what Dr. A said is they really treat like the patient as a whole human being, not really only worry about the transgender because I know Rose was thin to begin with. Like if she was never, a, she's metabolism is really, really high. She was never a fat baby. She's like, she, she's, she was never chubby. Like throughout her whole life, she's like a stick. But I did, I know she was very skinny and I did not, I, I didn't think twice. But Dr. A saw her and really trying to say, the, and say, Rose, you're underweight. And uh, what, what did I forgot to show her heart condition? She, she basically, her standing heart rate is have a big gap between her resting heart rate and uh, she's like yeah I think it's best that you go to the hospital to treat for the for the eating disorder first and I think in the the two weeks in the hospital I think that's where it makes it's a turning point for me to agree for her to take the HRT because seeing her lying on the hospital bed as thin as a paper that really changed my mind. I realized I want my baby back. It doesn't matter, she's transgender. She's not, she's, she's my baby. I want my healthy, happy baby back. If HRT makes her happy, then I, I will support her. Sorry. It's okay. 
Rose, let me ask you, um, what's next for you uh, along this journey? Um, and actually, before you answer that, how do you feel hearing your mom um, share that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, we've talked about this before, right? And I think, yeah, I think that's very important to me, right? I think that means a lot to me. Uh, um, that she cares, right? And obviously that's something I knew in the past, right? But I think it just means a lot to uh, hear her say it like that, right? Jesse, let me ask you, um, for other families, I mean, it sounds like the, the, your entire family is incredibly supportive and you know, you're blessed to have each other, certainly. Um, not every family is like that. When you look back on it now, um, is there anything you would have done differently? And the other part of that question is, what other advice could you give to other parents who may be in a similar situation? I, I personally think finding a support group is very important, is talking to other parents that actually went through the similar situation because, because what you're feeling, the fear, the guilt, and the, the uncertainty, and tr just taking the responsibility of allowing or supporting your kids to go through the next step in the gen gen transition, it is very, very hard. Sometimes just talking to other parent really, really helps. And that's part of the reason why I agreed to do this interview is I think there is a help out there. Like if you're there by yourself, it's a hard thing. The kids are transitioning as human being, as going through that process. The parent is going through similar transition and that transition is hard. There's a help out there. And it's, it's such an important point that you're making because, you know, you say that your, your daughter or your son transitioning, um, but the parent is transitioning and a lot of people will not remember that or will forget that as they're coming to grips with all of the things that you just described emotionally. Um, Rose, let me ask you, uh, what has been the most difficult part for you since, um, you know, people now know? Um, I think I've been very fortunate in general. Uh, when I came out to my friends, they've all been very supportive. And I think the school has been very helpful in getting everything changed, right? I think in the roster, my name has already been changed. And I think overall, I really don't have much to complain about. Um, I've been very lucky. I've um, had a lot of support from everyone in my life. And I think, um, uh, and it's pretty much as much as I could have hoped for. Um, so yeah, I really, I really have to say that I'm very lucky and I could not have asked for more. Is there anything that you would have done differently, Rose, now looking back on, again, you know, everything that you were thinking, the four years where you really sort of kept this to yourself, is there anything you would have done differently looking back? Um, I definitely would have had, I would have tried to have a lot more patience for my parents, right? Because I know it, well, there was a lot of strife, right? There was a lot of conflict during that time. And I think it was really just because of fear out of all of us, right? We, I was afraid that things wouldn't turn out, right? That I'd never be able to transition. And they were just afraid that, um, they were afraid for me, right? That what would happen to me um, and... I think I just needed to have a lot more patience for them, right? I needed to, yeah, I just needed to have more patience. And um, I think that's the most important thing that I could have done if I went back, if, if I could do it again. Jesse, let me ask you, um, the HRT has begun. Um, the process continues. Where are you on your journey as a parent coping and evolving with all that's going on here? I think right now, I, I think 
this whole year and a half journey actually changes both. And uh, right now, I'm a lot accepting of rose is rose. I'm not. I am not questioning. I I never. A lot of time, I never even think about. Yeah, she's transgender. It just rose is rose. So I am more in the situation of understanding and、uh, accepting. And I think I our relationship has turned very much in the last year and a half. And I have to confess, I'm a very Asian parent. I used to be proud of Rose for being like academically achieved. She got. National Science Competition Mad. She's the National Science Competition Medalist before. Now she's really into uh, uh, psychologies. She's trying to understand herself and trying to say in the future helping other people. So I'm more proud of her having the having the courage to actually insist on what is her. Knowing what's her and、uh, go continue on on this journey. That's that's more important for me, and that's what I'm proud of her. And I'm proud of her. I'm knowing more, knowing her from more of a smart kid to a very compassionate and、uh, really trying to help other people. That kind of kids. Last summer, she did a lot of. She did some chemical、uh, chemistry, like、uh, tutoring class, and all, she donated all of the proceeds to the hospital. And、uh, I think, I I really really can now see her for the person she is, not the achieve academically achieved, like smart kids, right? So I think where I change a lot is I understand her a lot better now, and she understands me more. I think I grow up too in this year and a half journey. That's wonderful, Rose. Let me ask you: What are you looking forward to most as you continue along this journey? Um, I think, I think everything I. St- Still have yet to do is just a matter of time, right? Um. So, yeah, I think I just want to continue to live my life as normal, right? Um, and I think after that, it's just a matter of time, and ah,、uh, from there on, we'll take things as as they come. Yeah. How did you decide on the name Rose? By the way. Um. I mean, what I did was I just went through a lot of baby name websites. And I just went through the names until I found one that really resonated with me. And why does Rose resonate? I I just like the name. I like、uh, the name. That's excellent. <laughs> It's as simple as that. That's wonderful. Um. So that's pretty much all I have. Okay. We went through probably a whole page of baby name, girl's name for her together as a family. And I always joke, she's thorny and <laughs> energetic. Rose seems very fitting. <laughs> That's funny. And now she's in she's in bloom. Yes,、mm-hmm. I I have to say,、um, Rose really. I think she matured so much this year and a half for herself, and、uh, I couldn't be more proud. In closing,、uh, Jesse, I want to ask you: What would you like to say to other parents who will watch this and may be going through something similar, or may not、uh, have even know yet that this this could be coming up in their life?、Uh, what could you say to them that would be helpful、uh, along this journey for them? I think whether whether is. Transgender family or not, as a parent, I think more importantly is trust your kid and get behind them. 
take, let them lead the way because although they can be immature, they can <laughs> they don't have all the experience. I know she's going to kick me、uh, under the table, but even with all of that said, I think you need to trust your kid. You raise them right, and they'll make the right decision eventually. Rose, last word to you.、Uh, looking back on it now, as you continue on this journey, what would you say to other parents watching this about what what's the best way to support their child?、Um, I think the most important thing is just to listen to them. Right? I think、uh, they're the forefront expertise on their own feelings, and I think. It's not necessary that you have to agree with everything they say, right? But I think just listen to their experiences, listen to what they have to say, right? And I think that's the most important thing. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to have、Thank、this、you. conversation. Thank you. Thank you.